Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll be revisiting the LW Seacamp 32. The LW Seacamp 32 was my first tabletop review. I filmed that review back in 2020 at the beginning of the COVID pandemic lockdowns. I made that video just to have something to do. Since that initial review, I've posted about 100 Micmac tabletop reviews. Looking back at that Seacamp review, it was fairly crude and basic, yet it remains one of the more popular of my videos, primarily, I suspect, due to the popularity of the Seacamp pistols. Sadly, the Seacamp 32 has suffered from being very ammo finicky and from a shortage of its recommended ammo. That issue has really hurt interest in the Seacamp 32, because what good is a firearm for which you can't find ammo, and if you do, it's too expensive. However, today I'm having some success in finding the proper ammo, so I think it's time to take another look at the Seacamp 32. Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. One of the first things you'll notice about the Seacamp is that you can't rack the slide without this magazine installed at least most of the way. By the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Born in 1901, Ludwig Wilhelm Seekamp was a very prominent gunsmith. During World War II, Ludwig survived being shot in the face because his own pistol at the time was double action and he was able to return fire. This experience strongly influenced his design philosophy. Immigrating to the United States with his family by way of Canada in 1959, Ludwig became the gun designer for O.F. Mossberg. He was also known for having influenced the development of the double action 1911-45 as well as the telescoping recoil system that is the predominant spring system used in modern short slide short recoil autoloaders today. In 1973, Seacamp founded his family business, the L.W. Seacamp Company in Milford, Connecticut. During the early years, Seacamp focused on 1911 semi-automatic Colt 45 pistol conversions to double action, producing the first commercially available double action 45 autoloaders anywhere in the world. In 1981, Seacamp produced the first of these model Seacamp pocket pistols, the Seacamp 25. Only about 5,000 Seacamp 25s were produced. Four years later, the Seacamp 32 was introduced, replacing the older 25s. An original Seacamp 25 could be worth as much as $3,000 today. When the LW Seacamp 32s were introduced, they were so popular they could cost $2,000 each and the wait could be three years. A 380 version was introduced in 2003. Of course, as a 380, the Seacamp 380, which is the same size as the 32, is known to be quite snappy to fire, which is why the 32 remains the most popular. During most of the Seacamp 32's production, Ludwig Seacamp's son Larry would oversee running the factory. Ludwig Seacamp passed away in 1989, leaving his son to run the company, but Larry would continue his father's manufacturing tradition with every Seacamp pistol being made the old world gunsmith way, individually and by hand. Now there's no argument that these pistols were very high quality, but with only about seven workers on staff, it was a very expensive and time-consuming process. With more than a year's worth of outstanding orders accumulating and unable to find replacements for his retiring original master gunsmiths, in 2014, Larry C. Camp himself retired and sold the family business to longtime friend John Wally of Wally Precision. This led to moving all the manufacturing equipment from Milford, Connecticut to Southwick, Massachusetts. Seacamp's website suggests that this move led to a modernization of the production process which brought about many improvements to the overall fit, finish, and function of the various Seacamp models. That might have been true, however, I've been told that some of the Seacamps produced during this transitional time were somewhat disappointing compared to the earlier Milford, Connecticut models. This particular Seacamp 32 was produced by Wally Precision Southwick, Massachusetts, probably about 2019. The fit, finish, and function on this one are absolutely superb. It doesn't seem like a big deal today to say that the Seacamp pistols were specifically designed for defense. Built for concealment, without sights, and only an 11.5 pound 
double action will only trigger pull for its safety. Seacant pistols are decidedly not target or sporting guns. But back when the first Seacants were being produced, to say their purpose was specifically for defense against other humans was really unorthodox. Most manufacturers of small arms would only suggest their guns were for target or sporting purposes. Seacamp was unique because Seacamp was up front with the design purpose. And as design followed purpose, the Seacamp 32 pistol was designed around the only hollow point 32 ammunition at the time, the Winchester Silver Tip 32. If you have a Seacamp 32, you know that this gun will fail to cycle anything else with only a few exceptions. Basically, any ammo with an overall length exceeding 0.910 inches may not feed or chamber correctly. The C Camp added several other acceptable hollow point alternatives to the list of the functioning ammo, including Spear Gold Dot, Federal Hydroshock, PMC Bronze, and Hornady 60 Grain XTP. But during the past two years, supplies of Winchester Silver Tip 32 and even the alternative hollow point rounds became scarcer at gun stores and with internet suppliers. Although it didn't seem to affect actual C Camp sales, from what I've heard, some C Camp owners became frustrated and some potential new C Camp buyers turned their interests elsewhere. Eventually, as ammo supplies completely dried up for the C Camp 32, I reluctantly retired my own C Camp as a carry weapon. I believe strongly that if you carry, you need to practice with the gun and the ammo you're going to carry. This goes double for point and shoot pistols. Dry firing is good, but live fire practice is also needed. To be honest, as my reserves dwindled, and because the Sea Camp ammo has become so expensive, I relied somewhat on practicing point and shoot with my double action Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380. By the way, a Taurus TP-22 might make an even better trainer pistol for this purpose, in my opinion. I've kept a lookout for Winchester Silver Tip 32 ammo for years, but I'll admit I haven't been as vigilant about the alternative ammo. I've gotten so used to the out-of-stock notices that I've all but given up for looking. That's why I was stunned when I was at a gun show recently and stumbled upon a couple of 50 round boxes of Winchester Silver Tip 32 rounds for only $65 total. That's 65 cents a round. Heck, I used to pay a dollar a round back when I originally bought my C Camp 32. But that success inspired me to check the internet supplies again. While Winchester, Federal, and Hornady rounds were still unavailable, Spear Gold Dot at $1.75 per round and PMC Bronze at $0.72 cents a round were in stock with no purchase limit. Okay, they're not as cheap as 9mm rounds, but at least it appears the ammo needed to feed the Seacamp 32 might be coming back. And that's a good thing, because the Seacamp 32 has been my favorite backup gun for years. Easy to carry in a wallet holster, like this one, or in an ankle holster, which is why the Seacamp has also been a favorite backup gun for police officers across the country. Now this is where I point out movie connections if I can find them, and I have indeed seen Seacamp 32s used in movies and on television. Here are a couple of examples. The 1997 movie Con Air. And in the 1997 film Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. The Seacamp 32 is a 32 caliber semi-automatic chamber ring delay blowback design pistol. It has a 2.06 inch barrel. There are no sights. Now today, Seacamp offers seven different finish options. The grips are glass filled nylon with nice checkering. It comes with one magazine holding six rounds. Magazines are available in flush or with a pinky extension. Trigger pull is 11.5 pounds, double action only. The pull is long, smooth, very nice, safe for carry, solid stainless steel construction, and it weighs about 13 ounces fully loaded. 
Packaging of the Seacamp 32, simple cardboard box. We have its manual, we have some other paperwork, and we have uh, foam packing. It also came with a, a sample piece of leather for a holster. That's about it. I also purchased an extra magazine. This one has a pinky extension on it and we also have the leather mag holster and the matching pocket holster. This is actually a wallet holster as the way I, I use it most of the time for the pistol and I purchased uh, another one that's a little bit more aggressive uh, sticks in the pocket a little bit better. Uh, this is uh, the one I use for pocket carry. Now with its tiny size and double action only long trigger pull, firing the C-Camp does take a little practice. Like any gun you intend to carry, I highly encourage you to practice handling and firing it. When you need it, you don't want to be fumbling around. The C-Camp may be small, but there's a saying that the smallest, most discreet pistol usually provides the best carry options, and therefore the more likely you're going to carry it. I find that's very true for me. I usually carry this gun in a wallet holster, but a pocket holster works very, very well. And of course there are a lot of pocket holsters out there. Of course an ankle holster is a good possibility. And of course a conventional inside or outside the belt holster is also an option. As for function, stating the obvious, the C-Camp is specifically a point and shoot defensive gun. The design expectation is that you'll be using this 32 at very close distances where it's unquestionably quicker to just point and shoot rather than aim down the sight. The intention is for a quick draw and shoot response. Now loading does take a little work, especially to get that final round into the magazine. You do get used to the European heel release. Racking the slide is butter smooth. It's easier for me to handle and I've got a better grip if I'm using the extended pinky magazine so that's the way I carry this gun. When you fire the C-Camp 32 it may surprise you how well you do. The C-Camp 32 is an all stainless steel gun so it's somewhat heavy for its size but that helps offset its recoil. While it's meant to be a point and shoot gun you can aim down the barrel to find your target if you need. Even at 15 feet I'm able to accomplish what is required without a problem. It's been a couple of years since I fired this gun. I'm hoping my past training will kick in and I won't do too badly. For a point and shoot gun like this I trained at 15 feet and I've got some Winchester silver tip rounds loaded. Not bad. Next let's try rapid fire. I've got those expensive premium rounds loaded. Again not bad. Let's try single handed strong hand PMC bronze. Single-handed weak hand. We'll stick with the PMC bronze. They're the most available and least expensive at this time. But then I'm staying on target. Okay, let's move the target out to 20 feet and see what I can do. I'm aiming for the head. This is the final mag loaded with PMC bronze. Let's stay at 20 feet and aim for the torso. Nothing wrong with that. As for cons, first of all, built around the Winchester Silver Tip 32 ammo placed a limit on the C-Camp 32's function. Thankfully, other hollow tip ammo has been made which will also feed the C-Camp 32, but finding ammo is still difficult and expensive. Any bullet longer than 0.910 inches probably won't work. Also, some will argue the 32 is a relatively weak cartridge. There are no sights, strictly a close-up point-and-shoot weapon. The C-Camp 32 is very, very small, so handling can be tricky. It's heavy for its size. It's hard to shoot well consistently without an extended magazine. The heel mag release is awkward for some. And finally, this assembly requires the use of a 32 cartridge and a 3 32nd punch or tool. As for pros, well, first of all, the C-Camp 32 is very well built. In fact, C-Camps are superbly constructed and finished. 
built of the finest stainless steel, the durability of this pistol is well ensured to last through generations as a true legacy firearm. The action is extremely smooth. While there are no sights, the Seacamp 32 is amazingly accurate. With the right ammo, the Seacamp 32 is also very reliable. I know I said that the tiny size of the Seacamp can offer some challenges, but it's also so small you shouldn't have any problems hiding it or comfortably carrying this little gun. Many believe this is the smallest top-of-the-line mouse pistol available. Since the Seacamp 32 is still in production, parts are easily available and support is very good. Finally, Seacamps remain in high demand and appear to hold their value quite well. Disassembling the Seacamp 32 begins with releasing the magazine. You don't need to remove it. About that far is good enough. And clear the gun. Using a 32 cartridge or uh, just a 32 shell, or in my case, I'm going to use a dummy round. Open the slide a bit and using the cartridge, bullet facing down, insert it to hold the slide open. Using a 332nd punch in the slide hole here to press the spring loaded slide retainer plunger. And while the slide plunger is depressed, lift up on the slide and move it forward off the frame. Remove the magazine and the recoil spring. And that's it. To reassemble, return the recoil spring. Uh, the double end of it goes in toward the gun. Reinsert the magazine. Again, you don't need to insert it all the way. Position the slide on the frame and while pulling the trigger slightly, pull the slide back into the frame pushing down when the hole on the top slide and the slide retention plunger line. Then you release the trigger and check for function. That last step might require a little bit of wiggling of the slide, but it should work. As for price, I paid $495 for mine new a little more than three years ago and I was glad to even find one. Today, they seem more available. The Seacamp 32 has had a fairly stable manufacturer's suggested retail price of about $520. Now, according to Genitron.com, the used price of the Seacamp 32 is about $385 a day. But to be honest, in my opinion, you'd be very lucky to find a used one in good shape for that. Most of what I see in my area are $515 to $565 new and about 500 used. Now this is where I usually ask you again to be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Well let's wrap this up. Putting the ammo specification and shortages issues aside, the Seacamp 32 is truly a firearm of the highest order. The Seacamp 32 is not a compact or even a subcompact. It's much, much smaller. It's more like the old vest pocket mouse pistols of years ago, yet it stands out. Its double action only trigger is downright excellent. The C-Camp is simple, sleek, and functional. Compared to any other pocket pistol out there, the C-Camp is undeniably elegant. But it's more than that. It's an effective backup pistol, born of a single focus of purpose, with flawless, smooth as glass functioning and surprising accuracy for its size. Built to the highest quality standards, C-Camps are also true legacy pistols. Built to last, beautifully made, and superbly finished. You know you've got something going right when you're the target of competition or the object being cloned. And so it is with the C-Camp 32. There's the North American Arms Guardian, the Caltech P32, and the P3AT, 
and the Ataga Arms 32 clone of the Seacamp 32. If you appreciate things that are really well made and function superbly, you're going to love this little gun. Sea camps are not cheap, but sometimes you deserve to spoil yourself with the best. And yes, keeping the Sea Camp 32 fed with the right ammo may present a challenge. And yes, it won't be cheap either. But in my opinion, if you're looking for what is probably the smallest top of the line mouse pistol available, the Sea Camp 32 may be your answer. Myself, well, I can't tell you how happy I am to be carrying mine again. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.